quick little unboxing today. Just a quick update on Barefoot's offering offerings because we we did a little series after we released the African Troopers, which are probably not in my room. When we released the Barefoot African Troopers earlier this year, where we we made basically the first true heritage barefoot boot that you could buy at scale. There's, there's some other makers that make small batches or one-off traditionally made barefoot boots, but having it at scale made by Jim Green, combining that South African boot making techniques that's really, really simplified, but really strong with the stitch down construction, adding in some extra leather to the Jim Green construction and combining in the barefoot attributes and inspiration from the uh, one of the coolest boots in history, the jump boot. That's what this ended up being. But, you know, the goal with these collaborations is to make some cool products, try some new stuff, make some stuff that I really want, try to solve some problems in the industry and make some stuff that doesn't exist. Because that's what I love doing. I love product design. I love reviewing products because I love product design. I love marketing. I love branding. I love all that that centers around it. But these collaborations are not an attempt to corner the market. We're not trying to take over every single boot style of, um, that we, we make. We're not trying to sell hundreds of thousands of these a, a year. You know, we're doing small batches, fun projects, and not trying to push other brands out of the market. You know, we want to continue to lift these other brands that are making similar products to some of these collaborations and not try to shun them. Because, we, you know, you've seen it in plenty of other industries and channels and stuff where they're like, oh, we've got a product that, oh, we can't talk about anyone else. Versus what I'm trying to do is like elevate all the other brands that laid the groundwork to be able to make the African Troopers, which include Barefoot, which include Vivo, which include all these brands that really did the groundwork to get people to understand the pros and cons and the benefits of Barefoot boots. And so it's only fair, is what I'm getting at. And I like working with these brands. Like I like the guys at Barefoot, they're super nice and super jacked. And it's, you know, it's just fun to do. I like working with a lot of brands. I like reviewing stuff. So it, it just all aligns with what I want to do. Because on Roseanne too, it's a lot more free form. It's a lot more uh, experimental. We'll try long form, short form, this kind of content, unboxings. And, and so it's a good, it's a good uh, channel to just be able to highlight some stuff that wouldn't necessarily make it on the main channel, like this new boot from Barefoot. Because we've reviewed this boot by Barefoot a couple times. Um, the first time was a standalone cut in half, reviewed it fairly traditional. You had some leather components in there, a mostly leather upper and a few of these other things. And then we re reviewed it again as part of this, like around this time with the Barefoot African Troopers to do that same thing. Like, okay, well now let's look at the other boots that are similar to this. So we cut apart like the Tall Vivos, we cut apart the Bruins, we cut apart so uh, Soft Stars and a few other brands that are closer to a traditional barefoot boot. But Barefoot came out with this one like right after we posted that video. And I haven't seen it and I don't know anything about it. And so I thought we'd just do a quick unboxing and show it to you and see what's what. Because I think they've even come out with another more traditional one since this. And if I remember right, it's kind of shorter like the African Rangers. Because this, this boot is what opened up the possibility to do the African Troopers. African Rangers, African Troopers, I say them wrong all the time. But it's just like a shorter, more like like low top sneaker or high, high top sneaker or low top boot. Um, so yeah, if you happen to want any of these or the Bruins or the Urs, Urs a day, that this, this new barefoot boot, we'll put links to all of them below. Um, I don't even, I think, I think there's still some African Rangers available. I think African Troopers are closed, but if you want a pair of African Troopers, just get on the limited edition email list that I'll also put in the description so that you can be on that email list. It gets early access, gets all the sizing information before the launch, has all the preliminary content and how to wear, the specs, stuff like that. If you're on that email list, you'll get, you'll, you can get a pair essentially and you'll know everything you need to know. And I think the next drop is going to be in like November or December, but I think these are still available. So check them out. And now let's get to the unboxing. What knife? I got two choices, my two favorite knives, both Kershaw's. We got the Kershaw, whatever it's called, super fast and scary. And then you've got the Kershaw Live Wire, which is the actually kind of scary. And it's so scary that I cut a big old chunk out of my finger one day when I was playing with this in a hurry. And so let's do that. 
Let's do this one. The live wire. If you want one of these as well, check these out in the description. Um, Blade HQ give, gave us this, and um, it's just cool to work with the knife gun because we cut so much stuff in half. Being able to work with these guys is fun. So check them out. Let's unbox it. So, what are they? Look at those. So, what is this? Okay, so this is the Ursidae. I'm assuming how, that's how it's said. I think it's Latin. I think. The Ursidae is a lightweight barefoot boot that combines durability and style. It is perfect for urban or outdoor adventures and promotes natural foot movement. Retails for $199. Another description says the Ursidae is a lightweight barefoot boot designed for performance in any setting. It is made for adventurers and everyday users who need durability and style in both urban and rugged terrains. Whether you're hiking or navigating city streets, the Ursa Day offers versatile functionality, promotes natural foot movement, supports stronger, healthier feet over time. And wide toe box, zero drop, flexible frame. Let's get that, let's get this uh, packing material out of there and see how flexible it is. Yeah, super flexible. Uh, U.S. source leather. This looks like a suede, you know, and their other little shoe, they use true suede, so it's a little more stretchy. It's gonna no, it doesn't have that grain and pattern in there, which I, I don't think is the worst thing for a like a gym shoe. Because kind of like what we talked about in the skate series, is like some people want the leather to stretch and form around their foot. And uh, so that might be why Barefoot does that. Because if I'm looking at the cross section, I don't see any grain. grain. <laughs> and so I think, it's, I think it's a suede. But it is backed all the way through the lining with a leather lining. So at least it's got that going. Uh, resolable, durable leather insole. Should we pull it out and see? I wish they would make their insoles removable. Cause I'm just gonna pull it out, but it's already, it's already kind of like, I'm pulling the foam apart, I think underneath. We'll see. I should be doing this on the top camera. Okay, so it is, so it's a suede leather insole back by some foam that the foam is glued down and so if you want to remove it you're gonna to have to pull out the foam as well and like replace that which is not too big of a deal honestly it's a little bit of an annoyance but they're not meant to be removed anyway like they're meant to be permanent and I wish they were removable personally you know I, I like the ability to customize and adjust the fit and add some squish when I want it or some not some squish when I don't want it and I, I wish they would just remove this edge binding around because I don't like the feel of that edge on my foot when I feel it. I, like I want, especially for barefoot shoes, I want it to be flat, flat. Uh, but at least they're moving to leather, you know? It's nice, it's, it's suede leather, but it is leather. And then underneath, you can see, I guess you won't be able to see until the B-roll, but I can see that it's a leather lasting board that has a, a strobel stitch, that, or a Blake stitch that runs all the way around it. So it's probably Blake stitched down to that midsole and the outsole is glued on. And it says double stitched. It's just some redundant stitching. Stainless steel eyelets, Z tread. And then, you know, this, this tread is, you know, it's got that herringbone chevron kind of pattern to it. It's pretty grippy. And it looks like the, I guess I can take a measurement. The outsole is roughly about three millimeters from the peaks of the little chevron pattern to the bottom of the outsole. It is about three millimeters, but from the bottom of those little chevrons to the bottom of the outsole, about two and a half millimeters. It's a pretty thin outsole, so you get that flexibility, that lightweight aspect, but you don't get that durability that you would get from a, a thicker outsole, um, like the African Rangers. Barefoot African Rangers. You can see that's a double, twice the thickness of outsole. This is a harder outsole. It's a softer outsole. So this compound will wear faster than a harder one, but because it's thinner, this will wear, could wear faster than this one because it's a harder compound, but I'm willing to bet two or three times the thickness will last longer than a little bit harder compound. But that's not necessarily the intent of this boot. You know, a lot of what these guys are is uh, workout boots, you know, supportive boots for different lifts, different exercises, but like they mentioned, it's made for indoor and outdoor use. And so it's still, you know, it still has an outsole on it and it's rubber. And so it's just not gonna be the most durable outsole that you can get on a barefoot boot. But I do like that they have that rubber slip sole in there because 
if you do wear through the outsole, you've still got quite a bit of material to wear through before you start wearing into anything too uh, structural to the boot. The upper is 1.5 millimeters oiled suede leather, insole suede leather. The lining is mestizo leather. The midsole is EVA. The outsole is a rubber 65 durometer, Shore A, assuming. The width is triple E, stack height is 10 millimeters, drop is zero, and made in Mexico. So pretty cool little boot. I want to see their other boots, and I'm curious to see what they continue doing down the road because, you know, we've cut apart the Bruin, and it's a pretty decently built boot, pretty good materials. It fits that need in the market, especially for, like, the workout dudes. Um, and so this looks like it's just uh, another addition to that because they, they make a very similar boot that's a low top, or the shoe that's a low top. This is just the high top version now. So pretty cool boot. If you want a pair of these, check them out. The link's in my description. Uh, Barefoot, those guys are solid dudes, make some really cool products, and they're actually, they're one of the only brands that's like bucking the trend of um, all these barefoot boots being super eco-friendly, like really more like towards like the granola uh, environmental side of things where they, and vegans, and they don't like leather, and they don't like this. Meanwhile, these guys are just jacked to the gills. These guys are huge. They like, uh, they chop, they're always chopping stuff with axes. They're always outdoors, like flexing and doing manly shit. And so I always just like a brand that's bucking the, the trend of whatever it is. And Bruins just, or the, and Barefoot just doubled down on who they were. We're like, we don't care. Like we, we are big jack dudes that work out. We make, we make boots and shoes for that type of person that we are, cause we want to wear them. And so the people like us will probably want to wear them. And we don't care about the fact that 99% of the other brands are eco-friendly, vegan, sustainable focused, uh, green initiative stuff. We're just making cool stuff. And so, you know, both are good. There's, and, and it's not that Barefoot's not sustainable and they, they don't care about that. All the caveats that people could potentially find wrong with that. Um, it's cool that they're, they're sticking to their guns and they're doing what they like and what they want and who they actually are instead of just focusing on marketing and trying to position themselves for what other people, what they think other people want. They're just making what they want and I can't help but love it. And so check out Barefoot, good stuff. And uh, I think that's it. So thank you guys, see ya.